Hello guys and welcome to my first English international video. Here we have my ASRock Desk Mini, it's actually my pocket-sized streaming and editing rig. Today's episode is not only my first English video, it's even my first sponsored spot. And our today's sponsor is nobody else than Bitspower, a water cooling company, maybe one of the biggest or most known water cooling companies. And yeah, today's topic is our i7-7700K 7, with its already really low TDP of 65 watts. It's a very cool running chip with loads of compute performance. But I already deleted the chip to get it even cooler. But today we're going to focus on getting the chip even cooler than that. So I told you I already deleted the chip and applied liquid metal. So what actually can we do to improve the temperatures even further? At first we need more liquid metal, a copper IHS and of course more IHSs by Bitspower. Maybe some of you already heard about them, but I guess they're not that common. So stay tuned. If you can't find the Bitspower IHSs in your local store, you can find all of them in Bitspower's own online store. The first integrated heat spreader by Bitspower was released with Skylake. It was designed for the i7-6700K, but as Skylake and Kaby Lake share the same CPU die design, they are both compatible with each other. But Bitspower designed specifically for Kaby Lake, but still compatible with Skylake, an upgraded version of the IHS, which was not only improved in the design, at the same time it was upgraded to be better performing cooling wise. And when we are talking about the history of the Bitspower IHSs, I can show you today something very special. Actually, it's the like first time ever shown in the internet. I think it is still not released. At this moment of time, it is still a prototype. And here we have the eighth generation IHS by Bitspower for especially the i7-8700K, I guess. But in this video, we are not going to focus at the 8700K. This will be a topic for another video, so stay tuned for that. In today's video, we are going to focus on the stock IHS by Intel, which ships with every single CPU. We're going to compare the results, delete it with liquid metal against the copper IHS, which is basically just a brushed piece of metal with the same size measurements as the Intel IHS. But it guarantees a flat surface. And at the other side, we have the two generations of Bitspower heat spreaders, and we're going to compare all four results in the end. To get just a basic overview about the temperatures, we're going to do five quick runs of Cinebench. We're going to do the five runs without a break, directly behind each other so the CPU has no time to cool down. I'm really curious about the results we're going to see so let's start with our little adventure here. It's actually a lot of deleting we have to do, lots of wasted liquid metal and lots of fun. <laughs> so stay tuned and enjoy the video. Over the edge, feel like I'm floating through the air. Exaggerated, that's what you assume. The 
story's over now, I must conclude I am conflicted, watching where I step still Hanging in the balance, not the life I want to live I want to take it all, standing tall Fear I wait the person you So at this moment of time, we already tested the stock Intel IHS, the copper IHS and the sixth generation IHS silver shining version by Bitspower. And what we can say at this moment of time is that the Bitspower IHS, the sixth generation one for Skylake, it is much thicker than the stock Intel IHS and thicker than the brushed copper IHS. And as you can see in the comparison between those two IHSs, both were used with liquid metal on each side. And you can see that the brushed copper IHS has some marks and yeah, some discoloration caused by the liquid metal. The Bits Power one, as it is nickel plated and very well polished, it has not even a single mark which anticipates that it was already used before. It's like totally pristine. But as the heat spreader is designed to be used as a thermal interface material, so it is not really needed to look good. But if you take a deep look at the Bits Power one, you just can't pretend that it looks really, really gorgeous. But if it really makes a difference temperature wise, we're going to see in the end.
So finally we have some results and before we are going to close the video I just want to give you a little overview about what we get in our results and what it actually means for our processor cooling wise. So in the top left corner we see test 1 which are actually the results for the stock Intel heat spreader which comes with every single Intel CPU. At the right corner you can see the results for the brushed copper IHS which is made in Poland and you can buy it through eBay. The guy who's producing them is really patient and is doing loads of different custom cooling parts like direct die cooling, LN2 ports and he's really doing nice handcrafted products. Price wise it is very similar price to the bits per IHSs so it's still under 20 bucks same as the bits power heat spreaders but you have to keep in mind that the brushed copper IHS gets discolorated and is very difficult to clean from the liquid metal. In the results of test 3 and 4 you can see the results for the 6th and 7th generation of bits per hour heat spreaders and what really sticks out to me is the load temperature of the 6th generation Skylake IHS. This is actually the result of the very thick metal construction which clearly has not the potential to dissimulate the heat to the cooler. Instead the heat rises inside the CPU cause it has not the potential to get rid of it. If you look at all four results you can clearly see that test 1, 2 and 4 are literally the same results just with slightly different temperatures and as temperatures are very easily affected by the ambient temperature I can suspect that they are even as I tried to stay as similar in the ambient temperature as possible you don't have to look at them like oh there's one degree more or less with one or another it's literally the same results the idle results are like in between one or two degrees and the load temperatures are between one or two degrees so the different ihs's are performing all equal so my assumption would be that the temperature is highly influenced by the thickness of the IHS. If it is thicker, the temperatures stay inside and behind the IHS. If the IHS is thin enough, it can dissipate the heat better to the cooler. You might think right now, so why do we need a heat spreader? It's very easy. It is called heat spreader. It spreads the heat through a bigger surface. If it's just a die, it is a very small surface which is just contact the cooler. So basically it is beneficial that the heat spreader has a bigger surface but it has to be as thin as possible. The other interesting aspect is the warranty. Sure we already deleted the CPU and there might be some issues with the warranty. That's what you might think right? But if you really work carefully while deleting and using a proper deleting tool there is literally no damage you can do to the Skylake, Cabby Lake or Coffee Lake. Sure there is a bigger risk with like Cabby Lake X or Skylake X CPUs as they have two different layers of PCBs which to that have a lots of capacitors on the surface which are very fragile and very easily to damage. But with like I said the Skylake, Cabby Lake and Coffee Lake CPUs there is like literally no risk deleting. I mean sure if you're using a butter knife there's always a risk but if you are using a proper tool like the Delete Dimate 2 or the Dr. Dilit by Aqua Computer, they are both very, very high quality tools. There is like literally no real risk you can do if you're working properly. So if you have deleted your CPU, the next thing you really want to be careful with is the IHS because it has all the important data like registration number, production number, the batch number on top of the IHS. So all those information are important for warranty purposes. So <laughs> They can literally see if you use liquid metal or if you deleted your CPU when it is scratched or discolorated. But if you save it, like put it in the box after deleting and save it for the time you might need it, you always can clean the dye of the CPU from the liquid metal. It doesn't get damaged or discolorated because it is polished. You can always reel it, so re-glue the IHS and use normal thermal paste so it looks like it was never deleted. So I don't think that anybody would really notice but 
Uh, don't take my word for it. That's the way I am thinking about this. It's not about the temperatures, it's more about the CPU treatment. And of course, the BitsPower IHS looks just gorgeous, like I already said, it looks just phenomenal. So at this point, I hope I could help you out to make a decision. Yeah, next time we're going to take a look at the i7-8700K. Stay tuned for, of course, my next video. As I'm going to do, I promise you, more English videos. If you enjoy the international English content, I would be really glad if I'm going to do like streams and like overclocking tutorials, whatever you're going to request. Whatever I can do, what is in my possibilities, I'm going to do them in German and English. As I know, I have like more English subscribers than German ones. It will be not every single video like translated into English, but I will do my best to do most interesting ones or those which might be requested, you know? If there is like any video I already did or I'm going to make in the future and you just want to see it in English, just let me know and I will take a look at it and see if I can do like a prequel in English. That's really not the issue. I do the content for you. And I think right now the video is way too long and I really have to shut up at this point. So thank you for watching and I really appreciate that you tuned in. Give me your thumbs up if you enjoyed the video and we see us at the next video. And don't forget it, gaming fitness, that's you see on GAX TV.